Hello, hello, and uh, good day. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your time, if you're watching this recommendation, and I hope you're having a, an amazing day, an amazing weather, wherever you are, because it's freakishly hot in here now. So, uh, yeah. Today I'd like to talk about an old, if I can call it that, a gem that I read years ago. Uh, it's called Boku X Kano which uh, roughly translates to you as me or I x her. Uh, I want to start things as usual with the overview, uh, mentioning the author, the any related works, and uh, there are none, by the way, other works from the same author or artist, uh, estimated pages per chapter and volumes. Uh, and just a little air quotes disclaimer, all of the info I mentioned here is what I found online. Uh, if anyone knows better, or if you have any, if you have access to any other information that I don't, uh, which could clarify things better, or even like uh, you know, just show that uh, there are that there is more than what I'm just saying here, uh, please tell me so, and I might just add or edit later, or do an update on on the description and you know, that sort of thing. So as far as my old online digging went, all I found about the author uh, for both story and art, it's apparently the same person, uh, is a name or alias uh, that goes as Shimada, uh, Japanese way. <laughs> the first manga ran for this particular manga went from 2009 and ended on 2009 of the same year. If I'm not mistaken, it began on February and ended on December, but it's kind of hard to keep track of that because you know, you'd have to buy the magazine that um, they released the chapters on, which is kind of like some sort of Shonen Jump or you know, Shonen Weekly and all that. It's, it's this big ass Tonkobon a compilation of a bunch of chapters. But on those things, it's not like all the chapters for one specific work. Like you got a, a bunch of works that, you know, just get mashed together into one magazine and you buy that magazine to, you know, follow up on the story that you're reading. Uh, I tried finding the magazine, like I'm gonna post a cover here, but I'm sorry, I, I can't understand the name. It, it kind of uh, mixes Katakana with, uh, our type of writing, which uh, they call it Romanji, so it's kind of amazing the characters are on the, on the cover, but yeah, it's this one. Uh, it consists of a single, lonely volume, only seven chapters long, and each chapter has an average of 24 pages, so it's, uh, it's very, very fast, it's a very fast read. You're not gonna spend a lot of, you know, a lot of time reading through it. It's very light too, which is one of the things that I liked about it. As far as plot goes, basically, uh, the manga follows the story of Shotaro Hayashi, uh, me Kotaku boy, who's forced by his sis, uh, older sister to crossplay to an event they were going to attend, like some kind of sort of convention. Uh, or, you know, those kinds of things, uh, where his sister usually sells uh, doujinshis, kind of like a circle thing. Uh, if you're reading manga and if you're watching this, like, you probably know what I'm talking about. And as fate would have it, Shotaro ends up meeting the female lead, which goes by the name uh, Yayoi Kanda, which, of course, he has a crush on. But, uh... Well, yeah, you know, while cross-dressing, so it's not the best of situations to see the person you like. But, you know, it turns out that his interaction with her ends up being extremely lucky and beneficial, if you could say that, from the... He kind of help, helps her, I'm not gonna go too much into it, because as I said, it's kind of small. It's a very fast read, so I don't want to spoil that much. But uh, yeah, and then, you know, from then on he starts leading some sort of double life, where on one hand he's Hayashi, and on the other side he's Shoko, his cosplaying, or 
cross-playing persona. Yeah, and that's just as far as like I guess I'm gonna talk about it because it's it's very short and if I go on about it like too much it, does, it won't make any sense reading it. Uh, it I mean it would still because the art is pretty cool and all that but anyway that's as far as plot goes. Uh, overall I recommend it because it's a very light read as I mentioned it's not something you you read and eventually you're going to hate some characters, you're going to love some, uh, or you know, you're gonna spend a day in deep thoughts thinking about you know just oh my god this work has you know changed my life or you know just the usual things like wow you know there are people like this in the world or uh, you know it's not like for example uh, Goblin Slayer. Which, obviously, if you either re read or read the manga and watch the anime or vice versa, you know what I'm talking about. So, the story is very, very lighthearted. Uh, the art is good. It's not amazing, but it's good for what it is. It suits the humorous tone of the manga and delivers, and, sorry, delivers on uh, cute characters. If you know obvious, simple designs, uh, both Shotaro and Yaoyoi, they're not like, they, they, don't, they don't have like amazing looks or it's not like you're, you're uh, watching uh, Gren Lagan or there was another anime made by, I think it's Madhouse too, I think Gren Lagan is Madhouse and there was another really freaky anime made by Madhouse too that has this over the top looks well nowadays would be Trigger right? Studio Trigger would be the the studio that you would go for over the top looks but yeah no it's very simple you don't know mostly you're gonna see them on school day attire and obviously uh, Shotaro crossplaying as Shoko and Yayoi on just you know casual girlish looks i guess you could say that uh, and once again the art is it's good for uh, for the tone of the manga it's not amazing you're not gonna find boichi levels of art here like sunken rock and origin which are just absolutely amazing masterpieces from cover to the art inside it's you know it's it's just gorgeous to look at but it's not One Punch Man levels either, like the, the original run by one, you know, the original webcomic. <laughs> Nothing against one, by the way. It's just, it's really funny. For its simplistic way too, but it's it's really good. The plot is sort of similar to Mizutama Honey Boy, which I already talked about. And Ikemen Joshi to Joso Danshi, which would roughly translate to as pretty woman or girl. It's more like a... It, I think the Joshi would be young woman and cross-dressing young boy or student, you know, which I'm also will probably talk about later because I've enjoyed it a lot. Hasn't ended it yet. Anyway, I hope that anyone uh, interested try it and eventually I'll mention other titles. Uh, I'll try talking about the ones I mentioned earlier too, but during obviously different... Uh, different schedules and uh, f I'm gonna try sort of separating between romantic comedies and action, uh, shonen, horror and all that because I enjoy pretty much all genres and I'm kind of doing like a double on this one but yeah and also try recommending some comics later. I hope you're all having a nice day um, and I actually wish you all a very nice day and thanks for watching.